Hey guys, welcome back to JQ Fishing. Today, we're fishing some pools in the creek for some bait fish. You know, in the spring, they really, they get fat, they're ready to spawn, and really, it's some of the only fish uh, that are open to fish for, like right now in Ontario. Most game fish are, are closed in our area, so we're gonna show you how we catch them. Just got this monster creek chub off camera. That's big for a creek chub, I'll tell you that. That's bait right there. Or is that thing gonna spawn, Johnny? What do you nah, think? I'm gonna release him. Just yeah. so uh we get some more little babies this year. Look look, if you look really closely, see the little bumps on its head? Yeah. That's how you tell that they're getting ready to spawn. Wow. So let's get a nice little release on him. Is he gone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you we've been throwing them right there by the rocks. And they just disappear. They flop and then they disappear. So the camouflage in these waters are so good. Got one. And Johnny got one while he was trying to film an intro here, guys. That's hilarious. Another. That's a big, monstrous. This one's even bigger, I think. Wow. This Another thing's... creek chub. We've been at this pocket for like what, 15 Ten. minutes, and uh, we've caught like three other fish off camera. We just released them a lot smaller, but. Again, you see those little bumps. Those are sick on top These of the These are going head. to spawn. Yeah, so you release those guys that are spawning. And With the uh, big ones, and you release the big ones. Yeah. It uh, helps keep the gene pool alive. Gone. You get all the big ones to reproduce, and then their genes go on to create even more yeah. big ones. If you keep the smaller ones, then it doesn't have as much of an impact on the environment because they don't have eggs. Yeah. But the big ones, a lot of times like that, that thing's going to be spawning, so... You yeah, want to keep the bait fish populations high in the area. That's the reason today. I just have this little float indicator. It uh, syncs with the rest of my rig. I got a little split shot about four or five inches above a little hook with a piece of worm. All I'm doing is just casting it out, letting it sink, and always keep your rod tip uh, upstream of your bait so then the line stays tight. There a bite. Missed them. Yeah, that's and crazy. You'll feel them, um, the bites, because as long as your line stays tight, then you can tell if you're getting fish. But if you're fishing upstream, then your line's going to drift down towards you and harder to keep it tight. Because every time you go to reel, the line's just going to drift a little bit downstream. Yeah, the difference with your rig, too, like you got that little indicator, right? It sinks. Like the indicator does not stay up on top of the water so your bait's getting down to the bottom right and you've been getting significantly more fish than me so and all this is is a little fly fishing indicator i just pegged it in with a piece of a toothpick mm. and all it's i don't really need it you don't need these but it just helps me to tell whether or not my worm is moving under the water and mm. whether or not i'm getting bites if i can't tell from my line This something's pulling against current. I'll tell you, you know there's something pulling. Damn, he wants it. There he is. Finally. A couple missed hooks that's off the deal there, but he's a small one. That's why. Sitting off, see how the current's kind of going strong there, but off to the side, slow. They'll sit there and wait for stuff to flow down, but small little shiner? Ah, uh, let me take a look at him. No, nah, that's a creek chub. Yeah, I do not know my bait fish, but again, look how fat they are. Like, every single one of these is fat. But, uh, from the winter same yeah. thing you'll notice them with pike too they uh they're very lethargic in the winter they're so they'll get easy. really fat in the fall and they'll stay fat until the spring and throughout the spawn oh, look at him go. off he went <laughs> yeah what i'm doing i'm just feeling my rod this is a coffee oh, rod that looks like bites there he oh, is yeah well, that's a good one johnny's getting the big ones on bottom there Damn, so two bobber downs, there you go. One with a bobber, and one where you don't see it. But he's got a light rod, Another so he's able to feel it. creek chub. Unreal, they're all different too. They're not the same ones. They're all very different, they're all different sizes. Yeah. Okay. Almost out. Yeah. And there we go. Beauty. Pretty sick looking fish. Oh man. Off he goes in the rocks. Gone. I didn't even see him go. Okay. But. So, this is the size of the hook I'm using. Very, very small. And as you can see, the worm is minuscule. And you don't want to overdo it with the worm. A lot of the fish you'll get are smaller, but even the bigger ones will bite the small amount of worm. You just want enough to cover 
where the barb is on the hook not yeah. the shaft but the where the barb is and that's all you need for these even the big ones will hit them yeah sometimes people put like too much of a worm and the issue is the fish are ripping the worm off right they're biting the piece of worm that's maybe not on the hook and that's how you lose a lot of fish so so we've been doing some off-camera fishing here uh, i don't know i don't know but look at the size of this one and oh the my goodness this is a creek chub holy cow look at those bumps that's unbelievable we just want to show this because how big like he was bending your rod. oh damn he's all good yeah it's, it's, it's soft ground but yeah these things they fight a lot for their size they're underrated they that, just don't get that yeah. big and this hump on his head the bumps Go make some babies. Yes, get a good release. He's gone. He's gone. They were finding right there, that slow moving pocket right by that log. It's not, it's not hard, you know, getting bites. It's setting the hook. We've tried so many different hook sizes. We've sharp, oh, there's one. We've sharpened our hooks, and even when they completely take it, it is so hard to set the hook on these fish. Because the, the hook is so small. It's a longer shaft and yeah. a shorter. So like, and as you see, watch I'll cast again. Make sure I got my worm on. Yeah. So, watch my line. See how my line gets pulled by the current and the bobber stays there? That's some slack you're, on, you're reeling up and your line's not tight when you're setting the hook and it just, there's some more hits. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's definitely one of the hardest, these are some of the hardest fish to set a hook on by Good. far. Because I'm telling you, they're not going to set themselves. As you can see, like, I, none of those bites are enough to make them set the hook. None of them. You got to set it yourself. You That's gotta. why sometimes it's beneficial to fish without a bobber. Because your hook sets are a little bit better. Because yeah. instead of having your line being pulled one way with the bobber and having to reel up all the slack and stuff, you just have a straight connection to your knot where your hook is. Yeah. So when you move your rod, you move your line. I just got another shiner here, barely hooked. These shiners are always fun because you hook them and they go crazy. You feel them like your rod tip bouncing a little bit, going nuts, and they shine. They're really cool colors. And you see those black dots on them? Those are a type of, whoa. But the black dots are a type of parasite on them. They're harmless to the fish and people to eat them. I mean, we're not eating them, but still, don't be afraid. The water here we're fishing is still pretty clean but uh these will get them because they're nuzzling into rocks right and they're sitting on bottom so obviously these parasites are going to latch on them from the rock yeah right always check too before you eat fish with the uh, ontario guidelines for uh how much of each fish you could should consume from each body of water yeah, i mean i'm not eating this fish but <laughs> So guys, this is why we fish eight pound line. We don't go like, oh, and I got a fish on, I think. I don't know, maybe. I think I just lost one. Anyways, that's why you fish eight pound line, guys. And this is why I use bobber. Look yeah. who snagged. When you get snagged though, you get eight pound line, you can pull a little bit harder. Yeah, then like the four pound. Out, and it's still light enough that fish don't really care about it. These guys aren't very leader shy. We're not trout fishing here, so. Yeah. Let's go. Guys, this pocket here is crazy right now. It's a shine right under this log. Like, I still lost him. I don't know if you got that on camera. I'm gonna go right back out and watch it. <laughs> they have delicate mouths, right? Like trout, so you're gonna lose them. Look at my bobber. It's, under, it's going underwater again. Missed him again. You pulled drag there, too. Yeah, I need to tighten my drag. I don't know why I have loose drag fishing for these, but if it gets snagged by us, I'm try to set the hook. I don't know, like, that bobber's taking off. There he is. Third time's a charm. Oh, dang. I'm in a lot. He got wrapped up out there. Is he still on? Yeah, he's still on. There we go. That's a good one. But this isn't a shiner, but guys, like, I probably off camera hook like six or seven while johnny was retying his line show that me? snag earlier yeah and that some bumps smaller guy that's a shiner yeah it is eh? that's pretty cool they all get the bumps don't they all these guys yeah well the shiners and creek chubs will get the bumps other species some might 
And off you go. Oh, he was crazy. Mm. Still got some worms. <laughs> we get another one. Amazes me how they don't see the fuck. I mean, this water is pretty murky where we are here, but. Holy, they're just getting smaller. They're just getting smaller as we go, you know that? We weeded out the big ones, now the big ones are smart. I guess the little guys. Look how small he is. Let them calm down. They make a little squeaky noise sometimes. Let's get a release. Gotta bring him in fast. If you bring him in slow, then that hook has time to get out. Okay, there he is. Pro uh, Creek Angler Joseph Menji. Yeah. Get that hook out. Chinks a little bit of worm. That's a pretty cool fish. Look at his tail. They always do that when it's cold. Their tail, they like spaz and their muscles because it's so cold. You have to release him. Let's get a good release. What the? Just come back here. He's in the rock there. Yep. Oh my god. A lot of you might be thinking, well, you're fishing for trout in before the season is opens, right? In zone 16. Trout season's closed until the 23rd this year, right, Johnny? Uh 24th. 24th, yeah. It's like third Saturday of April. Fourth. Fourth, fourth Saturday. You should know that. But uh we're actually we're not fishing for trout. These worms are not considered a trout bait, and we haven't caught any trout yet. We don't really catch any trout where we're fishing right now. So we're just getting these bait fish and really this is um, how we catch the fish that we use for dead sticking for those pike in the winter. Oh, his bobber went under. Oh wow, look at that, just as I'm talking. It's unbelievable. That's a good one, he's staying deep. Dude. But yeah, this is how we catch the bait fish for dead sticking. We usually will keep the bait fish mm -hmm. after the spawn. So once yeah. you hit midsummer is when we actually start to keep them for yeah. bait. And always make sure before you harvest a fish that you know what species is. So if it's legal for bait, yeah. we're allowed to use here the fish that are mainly catching common shiners and creek chubs. You're both allowed to use those for bait. So always check the regulations before you go fishing. And don't Look fish for things that are out of season. Look where he is right now. Yeah, they just sit right in the yep. rocks. Nuzzled right in the rocks. Unbelievable if you guys are just... That's why they pop those worms. Um, but... Yeah, that's all you need is that the worm and the bob are pretty simple technique. And you know what? There's really nothing else to fish for other than like carp, catfish, maybe like crappy right now. But uh, from where we are, you know, this is something we've been doing for many years. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always fun. You know what? Catching these fish. You get a lot of them. It's, you know, nonstop action. Yeah. It's a great thing to take your kids fishing too, especially yeah. if you uh, get some good action. So this is all that's left the worms in the bucket. Uh, all you need is a container like this. We had probably three times as much when we came here. And honestly, we just got these. You can go out in the garden or anything and just dig with a shovel. In the spring, you find a lot of them because of all the rain. They're up a little higher in the soil profile. Or you can even bring a little trowel and dig in the dirt beside the riverbank. But when you want, when you dig in the dirt beside the riverbank or the creek, uh, make sure that it's not sandy and it's not... You want it to be very like fresh soil, rich soil, otherwise you won't find the worms. Well guys, that's all for JK Fishing. Make sure you subscribe, share with your friends. It really helps in the YouTube algorithm. Like this video and uh, we hope to see you next time on JK Fishing.